Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with IRAC Veteran 8888. Today I've got a special guest on the channel here with me. This is David from Casa de Pesca. He's got one of the largest Spanish-speaking gun and air gun related channels here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and check him out. Today we're going to be talking about the FX Dreamline. This is a very modular air gun system that we're going to be talking about a little bit more. But first, I want to get David here on some fun targets. Let's make some fireballs. Have some fun, man. Let's do it. All right, man, you ready? I'm ready. We've got some butane down there, and I've never shot this before. I don't know what's going to happen, so. Same here. I never shot one uh, of those. Yeah, we got two of them taped together. Let's see what happens. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready. My soul's ready, David. That's not too bad. It's kind of like a whole bunch of like lighters getting blown but up. I felt the, the heat all the way here. Did, did, did both of them? Did it go through both yeah. hands? It did? It, yeah. We'll find out in a moment, won't we? That's not bad. You know, I think the spray paint is probably, you know, bang for the buck, maybe a little, little cheaper than the butane. But for fair comparison, let, let's see what the spray paint looks like. We can compare the two just for fun. Because we're right. here, you're here. Let's do it. Oh yeah, oh. much better. <laughs> I felt the heat wow, from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. All right, we're gonna get on to a couple of more uh, interesting targets, but it's always fun to have a little fire. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so I bought this sprayable sidewalk chalk. I've never seen something like that before. And you know, anytime I see something that's compressed and it says danger, you know, uh, contents under pressure i have to buy it and shoot it so i've never really done this sidewalk chalk before and we shot one of them just to see what would happen and what did it do it shot like a little rocket ship remember yesterday yeah when we, that when was we the one yeah it. So. so we're gonna shoot them again and i'm gonna have you hit the bottom and we're gonna see if they take off like little rocket ships let's see how it goes go for it man yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i've just got the bottom facing us I'm gonna start with the left one. Yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Okay, oh, that wow. one. Oh, that one spun around. You got one rolling off. <laughs> oh Ooh. no, <laughs> the one on the right. Okay. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, well, a little bit better. Yeah. We'll see what that looks like. So that's just sidewalk chalk, like you, I don't know, decorate the sidewalk with. Yeah. Kind of different. Trying new things today. That's All right. We'll get to it and we'll talk about the gun a little bit. All right, so the FX Streamline. This is a really interesting air gun setup because what it does is it's, it's really one of the first truly modular air guns that has come out ever, okay? We have this one set up with a folding stock mechanism. It's got an AR-15 uh, stock on it. We obviously see that we have a Hogue AR-15 rubberized grip. We've got a uh, Atlas bipod on here. So we've got a pick rail on the bottom to mount a bipod. We've got a full pick rail on top. Obviously, we see that we're running a Leupold VX2. This is a 6 to 18 with the really fine quarter uh, MOA uh, dot in the middle. This is actually optic they don't make anymore, but it's a perfect pairing for this particular air gun. Um, this uses their same match grade smooth twist barrels that they use in the Impact, and guns like the Impact, obviously. This one has a moderator. It can be ran with or without a moderator. It has a very, very nice tone moderated. It's very, very quiet. Um, I was standing like maybe 100 yards away the other day when these guys were shooting this thing, and I could barely hear anything. I heard more noise downrange in terms of the pellets hitting the target than I did of the actual report of the rifle itself. It has a great, great trigger. It just breaks really nice and clean, and uh, it's wonderful. So with the with the Dreamline, you end up losing just a little bit of the adjustability parameters in terms of power and everything, and you do lose a little bit of the power factor that you get in the impact simply because of the way that this particular gun is constructed. Because everything is sort of uh, centered on this one block right here and everything else is designed to be bolted on or added to it, it, it makes it to where the construction has to be a little bit more simplified than what you would see in the impact just to add that level of modularity. But in adding that model, mod, uh, model of modularity, you also uh, wind up coming in a lot less price, like $1,000 cheaper than an impact. Now accuracy, 
uh, Chad was shooting some groups with this particular gun. We were using the uh, Diablo uh, King 25 pellets, unsorted, and this, this barrel's unleaded. This is just an out of the box, um, you know, FX gun here. We haven't done anything to tune it. This is all just right out of the box. At 50 yards, the smallest group was 0.354 inches. The largest was 0.605 inches, and the average was 0.504 inches. So you're talking literally half inch groups at 50 yards uh, on average, which is great. Uh, Chad pushed this particular rifle out to 100 yards. At 100 yards, the smallest group was 0.925. The largest was 1.669 and our average was 1.11, or I'm sorry, uh, 1.226 inches, so about an inch and a quarter average accuracy. When you talk about accuracy and you talk about match winning accuracy, there's guys that are winning $10,000 at things like the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge where they're shooting three quarter inch groups out of guns like this, and they're winning those big, you know, cash prizes. You know, precise air gunning has become a very big sport, and a lot of people are really getting into it. This provides a barrier to that entry that is very affordable and still very high quality that you come to expect from FX. The thing about the smooth twist barrel that is really neat is that it is still a press fit barrel in terms of the way everything is, uh, you know, fit into place with the rifling and everything. You still get that bit of a tightening choke at the end of the barrel. So the, what it does is it keeps the pellet from, you know, deforming quite so badly. It makes its initial push, starts its way down the barrel. It's, you know, it's obviously rifled. And then at the end, it hits that bit of a choke and it gives it just that, that last little bit of constriction to really make sure that uh, the bullet is already, or the projectile is already moving as it's going down the bore. It doesn't just, you know, hit this sudden part where it just stops. It's already kind of moving, it's stabilizing, and then it hits that constriction and goes down range. Really makes for a very accurate barrel. And you know when we did the early videos on the FX Impact on our channel, uh, we had some of their earlier barrels and they were really relying on that constriction near the end of the barrel to get that accuracy. And they've since you know, made that particular change to the way they do these barrels. Um, as an out of the box option, it's definitely nice and accurate. And I do love the uh, flexibility and modularity. We're gonna discuss some of the different configurations that this air rifle can be put in a little bit later on in the video. I'm gonna get John in here with me and he's gonna talk about the different configurations and we're gonna show those off for you. Um, we're gonna shoot it a little bit more. I'm gonna get David back on it because I've been shooting it a bit. I want him to have some, uh, some fun with it as well. We've got some sodas down range. We're gonna go ahead and have uh, David um, en enact some vengeance on the sodas real quick here. Let's do it. All right, man, we got some evil sodas to take out. Think you can help me out with that? Oh, for sure, man. This is the perfect rifle to have that jo job done. So, <laughs> all right, let's do it. Yeah, those are little halflings. So, you so know, you got gonna, some that are on top of each other. Yeah, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm gonna start from the one on the left. Okay. Right there, so... Right there. You got it. <laughs> Good shot. You hit the one laying down there. One more pallet. Let's try the uh, side shot. This is my favorite. Okay. I like the toggle action on it. It's kind of like a end shoots. Yeah. Really interesting. You got some steel down there too, bowling I pins. I guess there's some. Yeah. Oh, there's a can or oh, it's a can. Oh, it's empty. You shot it. Yeah. Off. <laughs> so I'm gonna shoot that steel on the left. Yeah. Right there. Oh man, you hit it right on the top. Yeah. That one. The thing is stupid accurate. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> wow. 
That's fun. <laughs> Amazing. Good yeah, stuff. this is the perfect gun for a small game. Absolutely. 25 is basically my favorite. It's just right there. It's not that heavy. It's not that light. It's just perfect for squirrels, rabbits, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I can't ask for any better. And uh, one thing that I like now is just basically the new um, side shot magazine. Because this is the one that they were using basically. This is the, the old one, if I can say. And the new side shot makes it a lot easier to load the pellets on it. I mean, you can basically remove the whole uh, top of it and just throw the pellets inside. So it's just a lot easier. Uh, if we talk about precision, this is... I can't even say anything, it's just perfect. <laughs> just the perfect gun, I mean, I was using it for pest control, doing a lot of starlings, like on my video, you guys can see that on my channel. It's just, I mean, I've been doing that in a dairy farm and there's about 50,000 starlings at that, at that place. I mean, it's just amazing, because, I mean, it's just easy to load it and, I mean, it's super fast and i've been shooting around i think every time i go at that place i can shoot maybe 200 of them quickly just like that i mean <laughs> just magazine after another one just yeah. with the uh with the moderator on it when you're doing that type of stuff do the other birds really know or they they don't really catch, uh, it catch help, it helps a lot uh they yeah they can hear because i'm under the the roof so they can they can hear a little bit yeah but if if i'm out like when i'm shooting pigeons i can shoot two or three before they can even fly i mean it's just because you can reload it so quick yeah and... yeah so that's that's one part i mean you can load it fast and the uh, moderator in there it helps it helps a lot a lot so so with this particular gun, one thing I probably didn't mention earlier was that you can convert this to different calibers. You just change out the magazine and the barrel liner and you're good to go. You can go 177, 22, 25, 30 cal uh, on this. So you, you tend to prefer the 25 overall? Yeah, especially on this gun. I will probably go 30 on the impact because, I mean, I have more options to adjustability and all stuff. So. And you can crank that power up too. That's right, yeah, I can, I mean, the impact is the gun to go, but uh, when I go with this one, I mean, I'll rather go 25. It's just perfect for me. So with the Dreamline, what, uh, so far, what's your favorite uh, configuration to put it into? Uh, uh, as a hunter and backpacking stuff, I'd rather go with the, this version, the tack version, but it's gonna be the short barrel, which is, coming to my understanding it's just coming it's not on the market right now but the other one would be the bull pop yeah yeah me, that thing me, is me just too. amazing yeah i just put it on the backpack and you can just carry it everywhere yeah. so. i can see why you know they would want to do something like this because so many people tend to you know flock towards the ar accessories and i can completely understand that but the bull pup is so awesome because it's nice and compact. It's easy to carry, easy to point. You don't have to worry about bumping against things in the woods or, you know, like that's right anywhere. So yeah. really cool stuff. It made short work of that. So let's find some other fun stuff to shoot. Let's do it. All right, David, you're about to go down in the halls of ballistic fame. You're going to be the first person that I know has shot a baffle that has consisted of slices of salami. How does it feel? Kind of shaky, but... Are you going to be all right? I think I can do it, yeah. We're going to see, see how many pieces of salami that this uh, projectile will shoot through here, the 25 caliber, um, just for fun. So how many slices we actually have in there? There's like about 20, right? At least 20. How many do you think it'll shoot through? I'm thinking, because probably the angle, and different factors, I would probably say 10, 10, 10 of them, yeah. If we get straight line penetration, I'm going to laugh so hard. It's going to be great. I've never okay. done this. We really <laughs> only have like one chance to do this. So let's see what happens. Go for let's it, man. It. No pressure. All right. No pun intended. What? Did you hit the wire? No, I, actually that's the impact on 
on that salami. Was it? It went through? What happened? Let's go see. How do you say that in Spanish? We go. Vamos. A ver. Vámonos. Vámonos. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. <laughs> we always come up with random stuff to do. I mean, so when you shot, I'm looking and all I saw was like, I heard this kind of popping noise and all I saw was like this just poof. It looked like he might have hit the wire. That's what I, I thought initially, but... But it had to have been like all the fat juices and stuff coming out. Like, it, I don't know, because this stuff is so fatty and it, it perfectly penetrated every single piece of salami. Perfect straight line penetration. Perfect shot. Yeah, it was a good shot on your part. And the thing too, I think that people tend to discount, I mean, even though this is Redneck's ballistic testing, I get that, but people tend to discount the fact that a solid has a lot of penetrating capabilities, okay? It's not an expanding projectile, it's just a solid. So solids tend to penetrate more. Uh, so that's really cool. It's good to know. Wow. I mean, like I would have no problem shooting a fox or a coyote or something with that. And I, I would not worry about being able to put an animal on the ground humanely with that. I oh, mean, that's, absolutely, yeah. That's great. Wow. I'll tell you what, um, we're going to move on to some other ballistic mediums. This next shot is literally going to take the cake. Twinkies. So, you know, the salami wasn't bad, but, you know, after the world ends, after there's a nuclear disaster and all these things are happening, and everyone's coming out of the rubble looking for things to eat, and they find a Twinkie, it will be the food that survives the zombie apocalypse. So can the Twinkie survive the Dreamline? We have to find out. Do you think it'll shoot through all of them? I'm pretty sure. I think so too. Yeah. I think at this point we should just shoot these Twinkies and just see what happens. I know, are you guys getting hungry? We saved one so he could tell the tale to all the others. I'll just set him right here. What? I don't think it went all the way through. I don't know. Vominos. All right, now look, guys. I've done a lot of random things in my YouTube career, but I don't know, man. I don't think I could go any better than shooting a row of Twinkies. But we That's did right. not get the result we thought we would get. Yeah, I thoroughly thought it was going through all the way, but... You hit him. I mean, we don't even know if we went through well, all it didn't, of them. Well, it didn't go through. So it means that that, that projectile's in here somewhere. All right, Let's so find door, out. door number one. There's a hole in it. Door number two, another hole. Another hole. Door number three. Yeah, I can see the hole. Yep, there's right a hole. There. And it looks like it. It came through the yeah. cream right there. Yeah. Did. And yes. All right, gonna keep going. Yeah, that's a hole. Yet again. Came through the same hole right there, I mean. Yep. Yeah, there's a hole. Again. You gotta make sure, because it could be somewhere. Yeah, but if yeah, there's a one, hole in the next one. Yeah, there's a hole in this one right here. There's a hole in that one. Hole in this one. There's a hole in that one. It must be on that one, right? Yeah, there's a hole in that one. Actually, I don't see a hole in that one. I know. Nope. It must have been that in one of the <laughs> <laughs> number eight. All right, we're gonna go find that one. I think it's fake. Oh, look, look. Oh, oh, right there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> right there. We got it. <laughs> After this. <laughs> so what we wind up determining here was that it stopped in number 
13. There it is. Wow. There's your pellet. 13 Twinkies to stop it. Well, I guess there's going to be some happy raccoons later. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes for raccoons. How do you say that in Spanish? Diabetes para mapaches. Yes. What he said. <laughs> Let's move on to something else. So one last thing. Since people are calling this the Lego gun of air rifles, we're going to shoot some Lego men. And they're 50 yards away, so this is kind of a tiny target. It's probably, what, an inch? If that. Inch and a half, maybe. Yeah. That's going to be tough. You can do it. I'm spotting. Let's try. Just tell me which one you're going to shoot, and we'll... I'm going to start with the, the higher one right there. The one, the... okay, yeah, yeah. He's up there looking out for the rest of them. Okay. Let me try to get it there. Okay, I'm on it. Go. You got oh. him. <laughs> you got him. Okay, I'm gonna start from left to right now. Yeah, old cowboy guy on the air, there on the end there. He's yeah. not looking too uh, too happy. Oh. You got him. Oh man, it just come come apart. Yeah. Hit the guy laying down. Just make sure he's uh, okay. down for the count. You got oh. you got him. Now do a headshot on the on that one. Okay. Yeah. Arm yeah. shot. Yeah, I think you did hit him in the arm. You got him. Oh. Good shot. Oh, that's a lady right there. I don't shoot ladies, man. You want to do that? Don't it's a Lego. Her. Just a Lego. It's just a Lego. <laughs> okay. There you oh. go. Oh. There you go. You didn't miss a single time. Wow. Not bad. We're going to go take a look at some of the other configurations that this particular gun can be put into. Uh, we'll get John on camera for that. We'll discuss that some. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me here. It's just some different stuff. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, make sure right. you check out his channel. Uh, he's a great dude. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description box below. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. Thanks for shooting for me. All right, guys, I figure since we had John here, we would have him sit in on this video and we talk about some of the different configurations that we can put the Dreamline into. Since it is one of the first completely modular air rifles, it can be put into a wide variety of different configurations. Uh, you know, here we have a Woodstock version, which yep, is great. Classic. Yep. You know, kind of a classic setup. We've got a bullpup setup. And obviously in the video, you saw us using the folding stock and the mm -hmm. AR grip with the you know collapsible stock, which is always cool. So um, since there's so many bells and whistles here, yeah. let's kind of go down the line a bit. It, it, you're right. It's the first air gun. It's, it's, it's mimicked a little bit after that AR world of build your own gun. There's sure. something special about getting your own gun, putting it together, and be able to change it as, as the whim comes up, right? So yeah, it's the classic, call it Dream Classic. There's up to 11 configurations and, you know, give it another week, there'll be three more. That's how quickly uh, the guys in Sweden are doing something. So yeah, this is very classic. It's not quite the adjustability of what we're firing. It's more of a, you know, streamlined design, but... Kind of set and forget. Yeah, yeah. You got two bolts here and it's, you know, guys are calling it the Lego gun. Uh, not to, it's not a toy, but it's a good description, right? It's, it, it, you can change things within five minutes to configurations. You can change calibers, everything up from 177 to 30 cal. So yeah, just pop it off there. All right. Break. So that drops off. Yeah. And that is a walnut stock. Yeah, Manelli, Italian made stock. Beautiful. You know, th this we call uh, the dream base. And we actually sell this just as you see it here, because some guys, they really want to tinker. They want to build their own stock. Have at it. Why waste the money? You know, save a few hundred dollars, start from the ground up. Sure. Um, and it's whatever you want to do. This is, it's so easily configurable. You know, we've got a hammer spring adjuster here and they just bolt on. It, it looks easy, but the, the precision engineering to get this to work properly is pretty amazing. It's all CNC precision fit. The cool thing is back in Sweden too, is the ideas come, you know, they got all the, all the CNC anodizing, all that stuff's in house. So literally it can come up with an idea and a week later, they're good to go. 
Well, it's really no different than the AR guys because, you know, there's so many aftermarket parts that you can, you know, put on something like the AR-15 or you look at uh, Glocks and things and the cottage industry that has spawned of, yeah. of people just making accessories for Glocks and AR-15s and AKs. So this is the same type of thing. You're providing a platform where people can really put a wide variety of different stuff on these guns. You know, we're three months into this gun being out. It started with three versions. We're up to 11. The sky's the limit. So these two bolts that you're tightening down are the same action screws that would have holding intera that. Yeah, yeah. interacted with so this stock. So the trigger guard with the uh, And you're obviously adding rail. a trigger guard whereby this is all built into the stock. So Like I already know there's a third party guy that's making this with a big long pick rail so you can mm -hmm. get the bipod really out there for those, that's right. those bench shooters. All right, so you're already starting to see a pick rail on the bottom, which we showed off in the other video where we had our Atlas bipod on, Got my which hug. isn't here. <laughs> Got my hog grip, it'll do any AR stock there. Or sorry, not stock grip. You know, that's a. I could see that as being a popular thing where let's just say you know some folks may not have access to ARs or or guns that are similar to an AR. So this can scratch that itch for some people that want to have the ergonomics of an AR-15, but maybe they can't own one. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of dovetail. Put on a pick rail. You know, it's, it's you know everybody has their preferences. Oh, that's got right. My screws in there. No big deal. And Very cool. And how about you? Did you play with Legos as a kid? Oh yeah, of course. Really? Not me. I can't, I can't think of any any kid that uh, has to play with Legos. What? I, I never played with Legos as a kid. Lincoln Logs? G.I. Joe all the way. Come on. American. <laughs> but yeah, it's, look how stupid easy that is. So now we're back to the configuration you were shooting earlier. Yep. And You're just put on go. your optic, your bipod. It's good yeah, to go. we've got the nice little folding stock. This is a new option. So in terms of the different stock options, we've got the AR folding yeah. mech. Call and it you the can, Dream Tack. The Dream Tack. Yeah. And you can put your uh, collapsible AR stock, yeah, you know, whatever grip yeah. you want. We've got a quick takedown stock that's more yeah. of a light, skeletonized stock. Yeah. Um, this bullpup stock has got me intrigued. Yeah. Let's check yeah. that out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what do we have to... We have to pull the rail yeah. off in order to yeah, get so the stock it, off. Yeah. Two bolts here. Real easy. And we haven't really torqued down anything super tight because nah. we're just showing you the configurations here. Take out the bolts here. That bull pup is the one that, that I think would be the most useful to me because I like the real compact nature. Sure, yeah. Okay, that comes out. Oh, we got whole grip. Yep, your grip. Uh, a little factoid about Hogue. Uh, did you know that Hogue makes toilet seats? <laughs> of course they do. Or the most ergonomically fit. Well, think seat. about how comfortable <laughs> that grip is. That's true. If it's good enough for your hand, it's good enough for your hand. Oh, oh you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Little factoid. If you want to see me review the toilet seat, let me know. But I don't think that would be a very popular video. Be quick. You never know. <laughs> so on this one, you got to remove. There's a little bit different trigger mechanism because uh, you know you're using a linkage. It's kind of a, just a simple. You know, sometimes simpler is better, right? Yep. It's just a little bit of just a little rod there. So it's a little different trigger linkage. That you know that's probably the longest process. It takes like about a minute. So fast forward here. We've already right. got one. Hey, look, look at, at that! that. Right Oddly out of the oven, ready to go. <laughs> so we're gonna grab the linkage. And that just kind of connects right, right in there, the little hole. And you know, for a bullpup, these things have great triggers. Oh, yeah. It's not like a powder burner. It's still a pound trigger. Yeah. Very light, crisp. There oh, there we go. One bolt. Too bad we don't have any snow here in Georgia, because that's yeah. not going to do me much good here. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, you know, the guys over at Utah Air Guns, they're one of our dealers. They do a lot of hydro dipping and stuff and do a lot of custom stuff, so... Uh, yeah, you got your basic bullpup there, and then yeah, we got to have the cantilevered dovetail, and that is there you go. Dovetail or pick? Oh, uh, that's a different yeah. A but but that you could run a pick on top yeah, if you want. And I think they're gonna do a pick version. I, I love pick. This would be an absolute critter stalking uh, tool for nighttime use. You know, drop a little night vision. You know, uh, we were messing around with some ATN night vision the other night. It was like a eight hundred dollar rifle scope that. You can film with and everything. I mean, still it's little. You know, it's, it's a lot of money for an optic, but for its capabilities, 
pretty respectable. All right, so you got your cheek, your cheek piece there. Yeah. And that's it. That's simple. And then you drop your, your optic, optic on, on and you're good to go, man. Yeah. I like that a lot. It just seems to me that for FX, I mean, you got to run the bullpup route. It, like, that's what yeah. they're known for. You know, yeah. FX was really, I, I think they were the first to really perfect the bullpup. I mean, there have been some other companies doing it, but kind of really brought air guns to the bullpup world. It's short, compact. When you're shooting any everything from, you know, Fox and down, mm -hmm. you want that compact, lightweight. Still have the, because air guns, you got to have the barrel length for the projectile. That's where the speed comes from. Yep. Um, so this, like, this is a 500 millimeter, 22 barrel, but then 625, 30. And then we could pull this off and, and add your moderator. moderator. Right. There you go. And you add your moderator. There you go. Now it just looks right now. Yeah. Balance is right. It has aesthetically pleasing balance. I, I, mean, I know it's cheesy, but the Dreamline, whatever you can dream it to be, there's going to be so many options. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a hold on for the ride. Um, I think it's clever <laughs> because, you know, when you see like what you guys are doing just out the gate with the initial accessories, I could see this being something people just go crazy with and, you know, come up with all kind of different ideas. And, of course, you know, people are going to... The air gun folks are almost even worse than the powder burning folks over on the gun <laughs> side because the air gun folks really love to tinker and try to, you know, they know their get stuff. power and do all this stuff. So And I think part of the fun, I mean, these are engineering feats, you know, when you're talking about the pressure and seals. And so a lot of guys will get these guns, pull them apart, and they want to know how it works. That's part of the fun of the Dreamline is, you know, by, by configuring stuff, you know your gun. Because, look, if you shoot a lot at some point, you're going to need to change some O-rings and stuff. That's just part of the wear and tear and it's it this overcomes the hurdle you kind of know your gun so well that it's not a big deal very cool yeah you can handle it so very cool yeah well uh, i appreciate you uh taking a few minutes to explain that for us and uh really cool stuff guys uh i definitely you have got to go check out david's channel over there yeah, um, yes check him out he's a great guy i'm gonna have a link down in the description box below again he has got a great youtube channel tons of great content You've got to check him out. We've had him down uh, here with us for a couple of days, and he's going to be down here another day. We're going to be out trying to get some hunting done. Hopefully, if the hunting gods grace us, <laughs> we will be able to go out and maybe take some game on film. Yeah. I'm hoping we'll get to do it. So we've still got a little time in the woods. Uh, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Many more on the way, and maybe we might even end up going to spear some fish with some yeah, of these. Yeah, we we've got some... Yeah, got some tricks up our sleeves. Yeah, fishing. so we got a, got a few more <laughs> tricks coming along the way. Yeah. Uh, John, thanks, pal, for yeah, being here. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks. guys, have a good day. We'll see you next time. Many more videos uh, on the way for you.